It was a winter morning. Jack left his home jogging. It is just like any other day for us. Everything normal, right? But what if I say it is not? There are certain things which are going unnoticed or even if we notice, we don't really think about it. Let's rewind. There was a lot of smoke coming from the burning of the wood. The air was very dusty. Even in the morning, there were a lot of vehicles on the street, each emitting fumes. The atmosphere was all hazy with smog. He couldn't actually see things at a certain distance. Friends, just think, is this how it should be? Was the atmosphere or the air the same even earlier? If these conditions persist, won't it have a detrimental effect on our health? If you have noticed, all the basic requirements like the air which we breathe, the water which we drink, the land required for growing crops are all getting polluted. In the case of water, we can see if it is clean or unclean and we can refuse from using it. But think about the air. Is it easy to identify whether it is polluted or not? And if at all we did, how can we not choose to breathe it? And thus, the polluted air acts like an invisible killer. So let's try to learn a few things about air pollution through few of our sessions. Air is all around us. It is a natural virtue on earth which sustains life. The air is made up of many different components. Currently, in this race for progress, many things are changing and that too at a faster pace. Industrialization, urbanization, more and more number of vehicles on street, changing lifestyle have all led to deterioration in the quality of air. And we can say that the air is getting contaminated. So the condition where the quality of air declines due to the presence or introduction of contaminants in the air having harmful effects on living organisms and environment is called air pollution. Friends, here our focus should be on the substances that are causing this pollution or say the air pollutants. So tell me, where do these pollutants come from? Is it just because of man-made activities? No, pollutants can be from both natural and man-made sources. Volcanic eruptions, pollen grains, dust particles, forest fires are all examples of natural sources of pollutants. Whereas, man-made sources include the smoke from industrial processes, vehicular emission, burning of firewood, etc. When we speak about the source of a pollutant, it can have a different perspective. Like, if the pollutant is coming from a point or stationary source, or is it coming from a non-point or mobile source? Now just consider the smoke coming from any factory. It will be an example of point source. Whereas the fuel emissions of a moving vehicle will be a non-point source. And friends, these pollutants can exist in any three states of matter that is solid, liquid or gas. Say for example, the dust or the pollen particles are solid. The aerosol or sprays that we use release tiny liquid droplets. And the various gases like carbon dioxide, methane are gaseous in nature. Generally, there is a misconception on how pollutants can be in all three states of matter when we are talking about air pollution. If it is air pollution, the pollutants should only be in gaseous state, right? But no, here the air habitat, that is our atmosphere is getting polluted and so it is called air pollution. It is not on the type of pollutant that is introduced. I hope you are getting the difference. According to World Health Organization, 
Air pollution is a major risk to environmental health. The outdoor air in both cities and rural areas was estimated to cause 3 million premature deaths worldwide in 2012. But the crowded urban areas, especially the business districts, are warmer and polluted than the rural areas. Say the infrastructure there may be the tall dark buildings, roads, poor vegetation, absorb a lot of heat. The rate of evaporation too is low and waste heat is emitted from vehicles, air conditioners, generators, thus resulting in the formation of heat islands. These areas have poor air quality as the pollutants are blocked from dispersing. All this while we spoke about the things that we see outside our homes may it be the smoke, smog, vehicular pollutions, etc. But is our home safe from pollution? Or is it also a source of pollution? This is something for us to think on, right? Whether we realize or not, air indoor can also be polluted. Wondering how? Let me give you some examples. Cooking and heating of our homes use of urban household chemicals for cleaning, the use of various perfumes, hairsprays, air fresheners release a lot of chemical contaminants in the air. The building materials like asbestos, glass fibre, paints and varnishes have health hazards. Moreover, the houses are small and many of them lack proper ventilation. The sealed spaces in offices and the air-conditioned rooms accumulate more pollutants, again affecting the health. Many a times, pollens from plants, mites from the hair of pets, fungi, parasites and some bacteria are present which acts as allergens. Further, cigarette smoking can affect both smokers and non-smokers. In the rural areas, the major contributor to indoor air pollution is the use of fuel woods, charcoal, cow dung for cooking that produces a lot of smoke emitting large amounts of carbon particles. Indoor air pollution can begin in the building or may be drawn in from outside. According to World Health Organization, 4.3 million people a year die from the exposure to household air pollution. Around 3 billion people cook and heat their homes using solid fuels. Such inefficient cooking and heating practices produces high levels of indoor air pollution. When we are talking about air pollution, we cannot miss to remember this catastrophe which took long back in the year 1984 in Bhopal, India, which is also known as the Bhopal Gas Tragedy. 40 tons of toxic gas was accidentally released from Union Carbide plant. Huge grey clouds of the leaked gas had spread throughout the city. The result was a nightmare that still has no end. Residents awoke to the clouds of suffocating gas and began running desperately through the dark streets. The lungs, brains, eyes, muscles, as well as the gastrointestinal, neurological, reproductive and immune systems of the people were severely affected. An estimated 10,000 or more people died. About 5 lakh and more people suffered agonizing injuries with disastrous effect of the massive poisoning. The composition of our present atmosphere is also disturbed. We need to find out the root cause of it, like which are the major pollutants, their harmful effects and most important of all the ways by which we can prevent or control pollution. Yes. We will learn all these eventually in our upcoming sessions on air pollution. Till then, keep watching, keep learning and follow your curiosity. Thank you.